Today we're going to look at five strategies to teach your children about self-esteem. Hey there, I'm Charlotte with Colorful Teaching for Youth. Thank you so much for joining me. And the reason we're talking about this is because we've got so many children who are struggling with this very thing, self-esteem. And when we allow our children to learn about it and to really value themselves, it teaches them to make good decisions for themselves and to really achieve more. When they are able to do this, they work at their highest potential and the, it benefits them both inside and outside of the classroom because they start to um, develop a growth mindset. They start to be able to accept feedback and actually develop and work on that feedback so that they imp constantly improve themselves, not just from us as teachers, but from their family and from their peers. And if they work from their um, employees or employers, well, not employees, but you know, their coworkers. So this is an important lesson that we will teach our children. And so we're going to be looking at how to build their self-esteem, their confidence, and really just feel good about themselves. One of the benefits to you as a teacher is that once we do this, you'll start in time to see your need for constantly worrying about classroom management or behavior interventions or behavior management will start to decrease. So let's get on this. I've got so much to cover here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link to this exact post because I have a blog post written about this. It'll be in much more detail than what we're going to cover today. And I will link to it in the um, description for now, in case you aren't able to get a hold of the description, it's www.colorfulteachingforyou.com forward slash blog. But again, I'll link to the exact one in the description. Okay, so let's get started. The first one is self-acceptance. So we're going to teach our children here about how to accept themselves from the inside out. So one of the things that children do very naturally because of peer pressure and everything is they want to, or they tend to not want to, compare themselves to other children, right? And they're looking at what can this child do? Oh, I can't do this. What can this friend of mine do? Or how does this friend look? Oh no, I don't look as pretty. You see what I mean? So this is a constant comparison and we want to get them to kind of move away from that and look inwards at why and how they are special and different from other people other kids and what this difference means for them and for the others around them. How can they serve the world based on their gifts, not based on what other people are good at and what other what they feel they need to be good at. Okay. So I have two different activities here, one for um, the younger children, that means elementary children, and this is uh, more of a superhero kind of themed uh, activity for just um, looking at your goals and looking at who you are versus um, the high school ones where it's very, very geared toward self-esteem and really understanding who you are as a person. Again, both of these are going to be linked in the blog post, okay? So the next one, the next step is achieve goals. Now, if you look, see me looking down a little bit, it's because I do have a lot of notes that I want to cover with you today, okay? So achieve goals. This is a two-part uh, thing where the first exercise is you want to get your children to write down all the things that they have achieved so far in their lives, right? Or at least what they can remember. Um, you can do a free writing kind of time it and they just brain dump everything. And then you can actually have them create it by drawing it and drawing, coloring, making it look beautiful, and then posting it up somewhere so they have a visual for when they feel like they're not doing good enough or they just haven't achieved enough, they get to look at, oh wait, I have done stuff. So I've done a lot of things. I just didn't realize it because I'm comparing myself again, right? So um, this is the first step. The second step is now to um, look at what do we want to achieve this year because you can't possibly um, watch everything they achieve over the next few years, but it'll also teach them goal setting over a period of time. So what do I want to achieve this year? Again, brain dump everything you want, they want to achieve and then take a, um, a pen and have them circle two to five things that they would like to achieve. After they've circled it, they can then take a highlighter and highlight only one thing that they want to achieve. We don't want to be spreading ourselves too thin. So one thing that you want to, they want to achieve and then you're going to take that and they're going to hyper focus on that and they're going to work on it for the rest of the year. Now, if you're looking at how to how to help them with the goal setting aspect, I have 
uh, two different resources for your children, one for the intermediate ones and one for the high school children. Um, both are um, both will help them really plan as they go along. Now, if you want to partake in this so that they can see you also participating, which I highly encourage, um, I would recommend using the high school version because it's also geared toward adults. Now, if you're a teacher and you don't, you want to focus on your teaching aspect specifically, then I've got a teacher planner as well for you. All of these are going to be linked again in the blog, but it's going to take you from, it's going to take your children right from the very, from the get go, all the way to planning and executing. And this you can use for, um, your formative assessment, but also for student portfolios. Cool, right? <laughs> so the next, the third step, see, told you you've got a lot to cover, is be grateful. Now, a lot of the times when children have low self-esteem, they are in a space of negativity. In order to pull them out of this space and to be surrounded by um, the beauty that's in their lives, what we want to do is practice gratitude. So how do we do this? We're going to start with practicing just once a week. And the reason for once a week is you don't want to hit resistance. This is not an easy thing for a lot of children. Some children will say, well, I've got nothing to be grateful for. There's nothing good in my life. You see? So instead of hitting resistance, just start with once a week. When you start to see a flow, you then move to two to three times. And then when they've gotten to that habit, you move it on to five times. That means every day. And the reason for that is when, they, when you get to that five times a day, well, the other two days that are on the weekend, your children will automatically just get to, to just do that on their own without even knowing it because now you've created that habit. If you want writing prompts for you know your gratitude journals so that you aren't it doesn't become stale, then I have gratitude journals for each stage of your child uh, your child's grade level. Again, I will link to it in the article that will be linked in the description. Okay? The fourth step is understanding limits. So here we want your we want your children to be able to say no. This is a hard thing to say. Some kids it just comes naturally, but for someone like me, it took a long time. It took me years before I could say no. And the you're not just saying no to like everything, right? But if um, you want the cal the planner that we talked about, your children can go look at it and say, okay, well it looks like I'm busy on this day. I'm not going to try and squeeze you in because it's going to make me tired. But so I'm going to say, no, sorry, can't do it. Now, in the beginning, this is going to be really difficult for children, right? And it is going to make some people upset. But in the long run, when your children start to say no, it starts to open up space for them and more opportunities for them. And that's something we want to uh, make sure our children know. So hammer that one, hit, um, hammer that home. I think that's a saying. <laughs> I'm really bad at sayings. Oh, dear. The fifth one is healthy relationships. Here we want to teach our children the difference between unhealthy and healthy relationships and why we want to um, move toward healthy relationships and stay clear of the unhealthy ones. And it's because those people, the healthy relationships to help us make good choices for our lives. And when we get into that stage, we start to feel better about ourselves because these people will uplift us. They're not going to be trying to put us down. They're not going to be saying, oh, you're not that good at, or, oh, I think you need to dye your hair because it's, you know, too black. Or uh, perhaps if you wore green contacts instead of um, glasses or instead of just nothing, it might make your eyes pop instead of just saying, you know what? You are naturally beautiful. I love you for who you are. So choosing good relationships because when you choose good relationships, you make good choices, you start to go further in life and your self-esteem just excels instead of plummets. Okay, so those are the five steps. We talked a lot again about so much. So again, we'll link to this entire article in, um, in the description. But let's recap really quickly. We looked at the relevance of teaching, um, of teaching self-esteem to our children. We looked at five different strategies. Number one was self-acceptance. Number two was achieve goals. Number three was understanding limits. Oh, sorry. It was be grateful. Number four was understanding limits. And number five was healthy relationships. So thank you so much for joining me with this. I really hope this helps you. In the meantime, remember to create, experience, and teach from the heart. Take care, my friends, and I will see you later. Take care.